Hello and you're very welcome from the unit. Uh, shooting you another video. I am here. It is seven o'clock in the evening and I'm kind of getting the van ready for tomorrow. I have, as you can see there on the level, I have uh, loads of water in it from um, our IBC, which has made, uh, I don't know what happened to the tap water around here, but uh, that happened in one day. Um, just, it must, I don't know what happened to the local water system, but it must have just been absolutely filthy. I have no idea whatsoever. So yeah, so that's kind of nearly ready for the next day. Um, and I can't bring you into, I'd love to take you into the office and shoot uh, the rest of the video in the office, but I can't because the light in there just kind of makes it go completely loopers. Um, kind of have per day written out on the board of customers and when I'm gonna do stuff. Um, but here, uh, this video that I'm doing today, I had somebody email uh, me called Owen and he wanted an answer to a few questions, um, specifically about my carpet cleaning and stuff like that. I'm not gonna get all of that stuff out uh, because it's all packed away kind of semi-neatly um, with kind of some of my chemicals over there, the pads and the, the extra chemical up on the roof. So as always, I'm gonna part you up here and I'm just gonna kind of have a chat about uh, carpet cleaning and stuff like that. Um, so uh, there, yeah, Owen had a few questions. You're a bit wonky there. Owen had a few questions um, about carpet cleaning. Uh, that I just wanted to answer. If you don't know um, what carpet cleaning setup I have, um, there is, if you go on my channel, um, there's a recent video on uh, carpet cleaning and stuff like that. Um, and that kind of does a, a complete walkthrough of all the gear I have and why I have it. So Owen had a few questions. Um, one of them was about the courses uh, for it. Um, in England, uh, there's loads of courses run by the NCCA, and any of their courses are good. Um, I went to a course run by Andrew Briscoe in Cumbria, and his company is called CleanSpec. And uh, again, a, a great company, a great training there. Um, uh, and I learned absolutely loads of that course. Um, again, I think they, they, they make, they do make things rather complicated. I went on the course with Texatherm as well, and I think their course is too simplified, but I think some of the courses can be a bit too complicated. Um, it's good to know the theory, but in practice, whether you're gonna do burn tests to you know, distinguish uh, carpet fabrics when you arrive at a job by taking up the corner of a fabric uh, of a carpet and lighting a match and testing the ashes to see what content is what of the carpet. I don't think, I never do that. I don't think that anybody would do that uh, for that matter. But the courses are good because the courses teach you the proper way of doing stuff. Um, you learn about the, the most important thing I think you learn on the courses is the pH scale and what uh, what pHs mean, what kind of pH cleaners you should be using um, and how to neutralize stuff at the end. So I think the courses are very important. Uh, they give you an awful lot of confidence when you're carpet cleaning and especially when you're upholstery cleaning, you really have to kind of know what you're at. Again, none of it is necessarily rocket science, but at the same time, um, you kind of do have to go on the courses to know um, what you're at. Um, otherwise you can mess stuff up and it is just far cheaper and far more professional to know what you're doing. Because if you mess up a, a carpet that's worth two grand, um, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, a, a suite of furniture that costs two grand, probably more the case in carpet, but uh, if you do that, well then you're, you're screwed. Um, you're gonna have to pay out an awful lot of money. Whereas you're probably better off doing the courses so you don't mess stuff up. Um, about adding carpet cleaning as a um, as an add-on service, uh, like it's definitely not a bad bad idea about adding it as an add-on service. Uh, but Owen, who messaged me, um, talked about um, also doing uh, stuff like uh, power washing, doing loads of power washing and window cleaning and stuff like that. And I don't know. Carpet cleaning, you know, you're, you're, you're going into homes and you have to have 
the van quite clean because like sometimes we have rugs in the back and stuff so we have to keep things quite clean we don't do power washing so and then your hoses and your bags and stuff like that like if you're power washing do you have drums of hypo and stuff in the back that you could get hypo and then bring that into a, a house and kind of do damage to a to a carpet by ha by having hypo on stuff i think that would be very very dangerous um it's a carpet cleaning is a really really clean kind of job and you can see all of your gear has to be clean and so that's just worth bearing in mind that you know if you have a filthy van because you've got shovels and brushes and backpack sprayers and drums of hypo and rent bits of hypo on on stuff i don't think that it's necessarily a good idea like it is such a a unique and a very clean kind of clean um like for me it's a great add-on like I, as a result i've stopped doing gutters we only use uh those ladders uh very once a month uh because we have a day just down the road here where there's kind of mansions that have flat roofs at the back with skylights so i just kind of use them for access uh, we don't really do gutter cleaning whatsoever now apart from if it's for maybe an industrial company and we want to kind of provide their all-in-one service but privately we don't do guttering or anything like that because it's hard work um, I don't like the work um, trying to get domestic people to pay the kind of money that it's due uh, we're so busy with our carpet cleaning and our window cleaning that I just prefer to stick to those two services uh, we're busy enough with those two services that I don't want to add on anything else. So it can be a good add-on service, um, but you have to do the courses, like my stuff there. If you add up the cost of all the carpet cleaning equipment that, that I have, you know, it's well north over 10 grand. It could be 10, 12 grand euro for all of the stuff that I have. Um, so it's expensive which means it's not really worth half doing it. You have to do, you either have to be doing plenty of it or not do it at all because, you know, who wants, you know, that level of of equipment there uh, doing nothing all the time. Um, and I suppose it depends on your local market. How many carpet cleaners are there around there? You know, is it, are you going to get much work out of it? I suppose why I started was, uh, lots of our factories that we do window cleaning for got onto us and said you know uh, do you do carpet cleaning as well because we need carpets doing so that was kind of my entry into the market as well as loads of window cleaning customers always asking me if i do carpet cleaning so that was kind of like why i started uh, into the carpet cleaning um why i like the carpet cleaning as well is i normally now it's summertime and it's been great weather out so it's not really um it's, uh, there's not been any wet days recently, but normally I save them for wet days so that we don't have to, it's work we can do when it's lashing rain outside. Um, and I prefer to do that than power washing. I don't, like, I don't mind power washing, but I don't really like power washing. Again, it's the same thing. If you're gonna do power washing, you probably need a Bowser or a decent trailer set up with a really good machine. And again, you're gonna be spending huge money on all of that stuff to do it properly. And then if you're gonna do it properly, you need to be doing loads of it and you need to be doing it all the time and you need to be getting the right money for it. Like, what I try and do is I try and get the same money um, that we get for window cleaning, uh, we try to get for the carpet cleaning. And, um, like last week we did absolutely loads of carpet cleaning uh because we did um we did six o'clock till twelve o'clock in a factory um on the factory carpets in all of their offices uh massive factory and we did loads of couches and we did loads of car like i think we might have got maybe i don't know 1500 euro worth of sales just from carpet cleaning last week um so it is a great great seller for us but there's another thing about carpet cleaning you have to think of as well and that's kind of like the mindset like you have to be very slow and deliberate and precise and cleaning up any spills and it's a it's not a job that you can just go in and rush and go away again like it's just it's a very precise methodical kind of uh, job especially on couches and stuff like that you have to be just very kind of <clears throat> 
you have to have a really good mindset about your day when you're going out and doing it. You have to price really well, but then you have to you have to have like a bit of an OCD level of cleaning when it comes to couches as well. That's just what I found. So it really suits me. Like I, I love doing all of that stuff. Um, and I hope that I always kind of do carpet and upholstery. Again, I there is competition around me here, but they're not very kind of good at what they do. They're only kind of small time fellas. So I, I'm able to kind of, um, I'm able to kind of monopolize the market a little bit here locally just because there's nobody doing it properly and I make sure that I market us as having all the courses and doing everything right. So like I'm not saying, um, I, oh, uh, Owen also asked commercial or domestic and I'd say both. Like when we're doing, if if I go and do six, seven hours in a factory at night time, um, when the factory is closed and I use up, you know, 50 quid worth worth of chemicals doing it, I'm gonna be play. I'm gonna be paid bloody well for working at night time, and that was after working a day as well, which wasn't really a very good idea because we were banjaxed. But um, I'd want to be paid really, really well for it. Um, whereas, like, there's nothing wrong with domestic stuff either. Um, I suppose you get good at it, at it after a while. Um, you need to uh, you need to price the stuff right. That takes a little bit of practice, like window cleaning. With carpet cleaning, it's easy to kind of price it wrong and kind of do yourself out of money, but that just kind of comes with a little bit of practice and a little bit of time to make sure that you're pricing stuff how you how you need to price it. Again, how much do you make, one or two of you, like how much do you make um, window cleaning in that time and then just add on your price of chemicals onto that. So if a three-seater takes you an hour to do, how much do you get window cleaning for an hour on your best work and then add on the chemical onto it? Uh, if you know, you're know you doing a three-seater and two two-seaters, well then how long does it take uh, you know, for two of you to do it? Does it take an hour and a half for two of you to do it? And if it does, what would two of you make in sales in an hour and a half of your time if you're doing normal window cleaning? So. It's just that sort of maths that you need to do. That's how I price stuff. Otherwise, I'm better off doing window cleaning. Like if it wasn't making as much money as window cleaning, well then why do it? Um, so that's, but uh, in my experience, like it's very hard to beat the glass. It's very, you know, the glass is so uncomplicated uh, and so quick and so easy um, and so easy to get a good result with carpet cleaning. You know, you have to have a bit of strength of character as well, that if the job doesn't come out perfect and it only comes out just about okay because the carpet is so bad, even though you've done anything anyone can, you know, you have to be able to explain that to the customer. Um, like we walk away with, you know, nine out of 10 of our carpets looking brand new and absolutely fabulous. But there's the one out of 10 that is just so badly worn that even though it's spotlessly clean, it still looks really, really shit. So, so that's kind of, it's, to me it's worth doing, but make a choice. Uh, do you want to stick to, would you prefer to be outside power washing and doing gutters? Or would you prefer to be kind of like a bit cleaner of a cleaner and be um, inside doing stuff like that? That's really your choice. It's the same amount of money as buying a, a trailer system and a big uh, Honda GX390 or something like that. Like it's the same sort of money, but really you have to make your choice. And I think it's a bad idea to spread yourself so thin because with carpet cleaning, you kind of have to be um, with the courses and then there's like more courses going forward. I think you kind of have to be a bit of an expert at it. And I think you'd want to be doing it all the time so that you get into the hang of it and you get to do a good job. Um, I don't think carpet cleaning is a good service if you buy a cheap machine and you plan on just doing a little bit of it, I don't think it, I think it's, in England and in, in, in America and other places and in other big cities, there's probably enough work that in the end, you'll, um, it, it's, it should be, in by its own right, it should be a service just by itself and not mixed with anything, not mixed with window cleaning, not mixed with gutter cleaning, not mixed with anything else. It's a business in its own right. However, in a small rural market like I live now, there was a guy doing, uh, doing it really, really good, had all the right gear, went to England for training, um, and he had to close the business after a year or two because he, 
Facebook page, he did everything right, but um, but it didn't work for him because he uh, it's just such a small market in a small rural place. So to there's just not enough possibility of enough sales uh, to make it to pay your way, to pay your mortgage, to to pay for vans, to pay for insurance, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's why it, in the small rural markets, you have to mix it. And, uh, and as well, if you have a window cleaning base, you already have hundreds of, or thousands of customers that you can sell on carpet cleaning to <coughs> as an add-on service. So here, I'm gonna leave it off there, guys, 15 minutes on this video. That's what I think of carpet cleaning. I like doing it, but you might have, if you like power washing and you have power washers and stuff like that already, um, you could be better off uh, doing stuff like that. Um, and because of that, I, the kind of power washing I stick to in my business is that. Yeah, like that's the size of it. Yeah, like that, that's power right there. Like if you want power, forget your Hondas, forget any other kind of machine, like forget your trailer systems. Carter is what you want. That's the real deal. Like if you're washing vans or like you could wash down a skyscraper with that yoke. That that's yeah, that's what you need to buy. Buy buy one of those. I'm selling that now. It'll cost you about two and a half grand. Uh it's up for sale. Slight use like for cleaning vans and stuff like that, but I will sell that to the right buyer for two and a half, three grand, something like that, you know, so something like that.